Two absolutely miserable losses in Detroit. The Giants just could not get out of their own way defensively, blowing a 6-1 to lead. And all is said and done, the Giants are 5-9. and nine. So is it time for concern, panic, or doom? We'll discuss next. You are Locked On Giants, your daily San Francisco Giants podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to Locked On Giants, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. My name is Ben Kaspic, and on this show, we provide daily episodes Monday through Friday, talking about the San Francisco Giants in a way that's data-driven and rational, but also simple, passionate, and accessible to all. I'm a former contributor for the baseball statistics and analysis websites Beyond the Box Score and Rotographs. I've been podcasting about the Giants since 2015, and I'm a lifelong fan. Thank you for making Locked on Giants your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get podcasts, including YouTube, so check us out there if you have not already, and hit that subscribe button if you're watching on YouTube. Today's episode is brought to you by Ultimate Baseball GM. Ever dreamed of becoming an MLB GM and managing your baseball franchise? Then this game is definitely for you. To download the game, just visit ultimatebaseballgm.com or look it up on the app stores. Our listeners get a 100% free boost to their franchise when using promo locked on all caps in the game. And coming up on today's show, the Giants don't get a win in Detroit. And on the bright side, they didn't lose all three. They didn't play the third game, but they lost two and 1-0 in Detroit against the Tigers who came into that series with a record of what? 3 and 9, I believe was their record and now their record is 5 and 9 the same as the San Francisco Giants. So just miserable as a fan each of these two games. The Giants were kind of shut down in game 1 and then they came back late JD Davis who's just been excellent to start the season as has Tyro Estrada. Uh clutch late three-run homer to tie it, but then in extra innings, the Giants just couldn't get out of their own way. They, David VR with just an unbelievably inexplicable, just de- poor decision like I've never seen before. Uh, tying run automatically on second base, extra innings. He's playing second base, though, and there's a, like, somewhat high chopper to second and instead instead of just taking the out at first he throws to third where he just had no chance to get the runner and so then you know everybody's safe he throws to third runner safe and then the batter is safe and that's the winning run and so Camilo Duvall kind of in a heroic effort does get a couple of strikeouts to keep that tying run on third but on a 3-0 count with two outs he gives up a three-run homer uh, but he really had to get four outs I mean, he he got three outs in the inning, and so the game should have been over. And then so just devastation there with the being one out away from winning, and then you give up a three-run homer. And then in the next game, the Giants are up 6-1, to one, and Tony DiSclefani had an excellent start. So if you were to tell me that the Giants scored six runs in the first three innings of that game, and they got an excellent start out of DiSclefani, I would tell you the odds of winning were 95% or higher, which is what... You know, according to Baseball Savant, that was the Giants' win probability in that second game was like 95%, which is they had the same kind of win probability in that loss to the Kansas City Royals when they led 5-1. to So, you know, in 14 games this year, the Giants have blown a 5-1 to lead to the Royals and a 6-1 to lead to the Tigers. And so those are games like the probability suggests at 95 plus percent that you should you could go a whole season and not lose either of those games. And so for the Giants to lose twice in those circumstances, is just unacceptable. And, you know, this time it was like Brandon Crawford making poor defensive plays made clearly three errors. He was only charged with two, but there was one that was just routine, routine, and it was whiffed on and ruled a hit for some reason but he made three errors in this game in my opinion and then there was a ball to Blake Sable in left field and he really took a horrible route got turned around uh, off the bat of Javi Baez late in the game and the Giants offense after scoring six in the first three innings they were shut down the rest of the way but as I I've mentioned this recently it feels like it's on the offense when the pitching is faltering. But if you put up six and you're leading six to one 
kind of late in the game against the Tigers. Yeah, I mean, you can talk about it after the game. Hey, the offense went cold after a hot start. But at the end of the day, you're, you've given up seven runs to the Tigers. And it's asking a lot to expect your offense to put up eight runs a game. And so over the last three games, the Giants have scored five, five, and six. And they lost all three. And they've they've allowed, on average, eight runs a game in those three. Ten, seven, and seven. And so... Uh, and also in extra innings, the Giants just had a really, they played four extra innings, the 10th and 11th in both games. And they only managed, what, one run in those four innings when they had a free runner on second base to start the inning. And so, again, like these are just, they they just didn't execute when they needed to. And the result is that they're five and nine. And so, like I said, is it time for concern? Is it time for panic? Or is it time for doom? It's definitely one of the three. It's not time for like, I mean, it, there's there are still reasons to be optimistic. A lot of the set stuff I've been talking about is still true in that the offense, I know it's been inconsistent, but that's kind of true for any team, I bet you. Giants have been more inconsistent than most, I would say, but also overall offensively, they've done a fine job. And if you look at where they rank in a bunch of categories, they rank highly. And then defensively, outside of these last couple games, they actually had done a really good job. But the VR mistake, it's like when they played bad defense, it was supremely costly. And then, I mean, the bullpen has been a disaster. But overall, the uh, the pitching, like a lot of the numbers suggest that it should be better. And it will be better. I mean, the some of the stuff we're seeing is just not going to last, like out of Stripling and Taylor Rogers. So concern panic or doom i'm going to put i'm going to pick one of those three and and back it up with some some facts hopefully that support the point and we'll get into that in just a minute but before we do this episode is brought to you by ultimate baseball gm which is my new favorite game have you ever dreamed of becoming an mlb gm i know it was my dream for a long time actually and it's so great to have Ultimate Baseball GM because I'm able to put those skills to the test. And it's not as easy as you might think. You've got to hire the right coaches and staff, manage team finances, scout and draft players, manage difficult personalities, clubhouse chemistry, injuries, navigating your franchise through free agency and the ups and downs of a season. Very realistic, just like, you know, Farhan Zaidi. You've got to you've got to manage a lot of things and as Farhan Zaidi may be finding out it's not as easy as you might think. So, Locked On Giants listeners get a 100% free boost to their franchise when using the promo Locked On in the game store. So make sure to check it out. To download the game, just visit probaseballgm.com, scan the code or look it up on the app stores. That's probaseballgm.com, Ultimate Baseball GM. Start your dynasty today. All right, as promised, concern, panic, or doom over the Giants' 5-9 and nine start. It's one of the worst records in the National League right now. Uh, the Rockies have a worse record. The Nationals have a worse record, and that's it. The Giants come in 13th in the National League out of the 15 teams in terms of their record. But their run differential is minus six, which is not third worst. You're looking at across the league, there's, you know, the Rockies are at minus 27, and run differential is just simply runs scored minus runs allowed. So the Giants have only been outscored by six runs on the season. And, you know, the Rockies have been outscored by 27. The Nationals have been outscored by 20. The Phillies have been outscored by 16. And how about this? The Marlins, where the Giants go now, have been outscored by 26 runs, and yet they have a 500 record. And so... Run differential is actually more predictive of kind of future performance than your record, especially in a small sample. Uh, and so it's concern, panic, or doom. I'm at concern. I'm not at panic, and I'm certainly not at doom. And I'm at, like I said, I'm going to kind of use some facts to back this up, not just, you know, winging it, but just to give some examples. The Let's look at last year. The Giants started off 13 and 5. I feel like a lot of people forget that. They were coming off a 107 win season and then they started 13 and 5, which is fantastic. I mean, you look at the Braves right now are 12 and 4. I think it's the best record in the National League. Yeah, 12 and 4. And so in order in order to achieve 13 and 5, 
the Braves would go one and one. Like that's how hot the Giants started off was 13 and five. And they ended up 81 and 81. So not, you know, being 13 and five was not very predictive of what was to come for the Giants. And so I just looked around the league uh, at some of the other records for some other teams at that same time when the Giants were 13 and five. And we find just tons of examples. I could only fit so many in a tweet and I included the ones I found most prominent, but there were you know, like half the teams, basically, their early season record didn't really have anything to do with what their final record ended up being. And so here are some examples. The Baltimore Orioles were 6-11, and 11, and they ended up over 500 at 83-79. and 79. Not necessarily the best example because they called up, you know, some prospects late in the year. I mean, Adley Rutschman, did he just debut in the middle of last year, I think? So, and then Gunnar Henderson. So whatever, we can maybe skip them. How about the Cleveland Guardians who ended up winning the American League Central with a 92 and 70 record? They started out seven and 10, which, you know, the Giants would just have to go two and one. If they win the series in Miami, that would be their record. And the Guardians, it didn't slow them down. They ended up 92 and 70, like I said. Atlanta started out last year eight and 10, and they ended up winning 101 games, 101 and 61. The Angels were 11 and 7. Great start for the Angels. They ended up 73 and 89. The Rockies were 10 and 7. Nice start for the upstart Colorado Rockies. 10 and 7. They ended up 68 and 94. And so this is even more games than we're looking at now when we're looking at the Giants have played 14 games. This here is like another, you know, three. It's like after the Marlins series. Let's see where the Giants stand. And I don't know. So when I look at the the Marlins run differential, they're basically due for some regression. That run differential of minus 26 for the Marlins has an expected record of 5 and 11 and they're 8 and 8. So I see them I I'm hopeful that the Giants who have kind of underperformed their kind of expected numbers across the board and just fluky losses that if your odds of winning are 95%, I mean, that should mean that 95 out of 100 times you win that game. And yet twice they've lost in 14 games. So it doesn't really statistically make any sense. And you, I'm sure there are some of you listening who are like, well, it's Gabe Kapler's bullpen management. Not really. I mean, yes, actually, in the Stripling Royals game, I and I totally called him out on what I thought was a poor decision to leave in Stripling to face Salvador Perez, who represented the tying run. Blah, blah, blah. But in the Tigers series, I mean, I can point to if we're talking about Kapler, he really let Di Scalfani go because he was pitching so well. I mean, like I said, to put up six early runs and to get a great and pretty deep start by Di Scalfani, I think he ended up going six and two thirds. But that two thirds, there was another Crawford error. He really should have got through seven. Uh, But, you know, it was it was the guys you need giving it up. I mean, Doval gave up a walk-off homer. Brebbia faltered and and gave up a couple base runners and then a Javier Baez huge hit that Sable couldn't make a play on. And so it's really nothing. There's nothing Kapler can do right now. The guys, there's just nobody who's really performing out of the bullpen except Tyler Rogers, who pitched, what, two scoreless innings uh, in the second loss in the series. I think he pitched a scoreless ninth and tenth. Uh, despite, you know, the automatic runner on second to start the 10th. And so Tyler Rogers has been great. Scott Alexander has been pretty good. But outside of that, almost everybody in that bullpen has stunk. And so, you know, and a lot of guys with track records, Taylor Rogers, Ross Stripling, these are not guys who are going to have ERAs over 10, but that's what we've seen so far. So, Anyway, I don't remember exactly where I was going with that point, but basically I think the Giants are due for some positive luck or something, just some kind of breaks, whereas the Marlins, I think, look to be a little bit due to take a step back and not be able to hold this 8-8 eight and eight kind of record with a minus 26 run differential. And, I mean, the Marlins have played two more games than the Giants, and they've scored 20 fewer runs. Imagine if the Giants played two games and scored negative 10 runs a game, and that would be the Miami Marlins offense so far this year. And so that's what I mean when I say the Giants offense. If you look around the league, like, for example, the Padres 
have played three more games than the Giants. The Padres, right, with Machado and Bogarts and Soto and all these guys, they've played three more games than the Giants and have scored two more runs. So if the Giants score two runs in this three-game series in Miami, then two total runs, let's say zero, one, and one, you would be like, oh my God, the offense is terrible. That's the Padres so far. And so, like I said, I mean, the problem is the Giants have allowed two more runs in three fewer games than the Padres. So anyway, I mean, the Padres are under 500 too. The Dodgers are at 500. The Cubs and Pirates are over 500. The Phillies were 5-10. and 10. They won yesterday, so now they're 6-10. and 10. So things are weird in small samples in baseball, and that's kind of what we're looking at here. Uh, if you believed the Giants were going to be bad, this just kind of confirms your belief. But if you believed, like me, that the Giants look like a mid-80s type win team, which can mean, if things go right, 90-something, and if, if things go wrong, under 500. But if things kind of go as expected, mid, mid-80s, ish. And I don't think that a, f- a five and nine start actually moves the needle much. And that's what Fangraph's uh, uh, playoff odd probabilities kind of point to is that the Giants entered the year with playoff odds, according to Fangraph's of 40%. And right now they're 36%. And so essentially a 14 game span just doesn't really move the needle, especially, I mean, I guess if you go like, oh, and 14, that's really going to sink you. But Five and nine, it just doesn't doom you. And so it's not doom. It's not panic yet, but it is concern and they need to play better. And what better time than the present to turn it around, win a series, maybe sweep a series. Come on. I need this. The Giants need this. They don't need it, but they could certainly use it. So coming up in just a minute, there's more to discuss. Some roster moves, some injuries. Jock Peterson is the latest Giant to be hurt. And so we'll discuss the ramifications on the roster and how maybe having the day off yesterday with the rain out might actually work in the Giants' benefit. So we'll get into that in just a minute. But before we do, this episode is brought to you by So Rare. Our new sponsor, So Rare, is a revolutionary fantasy baseball game and marketplace transforming fans into owners with officially licensed digital cards featuring players from across all 30 MLB teams. Unlike other fantasy baseball platforms, so rare managers truly own their fantasy experience, collecting, buying, selling, and competing with player cards against global opponents to win epic rewards. Win or lose, you still own your cards and there's no cost to play. Plus, the more you win, the more you advance, collecting increasingly powerful cards and accessing next level competitions and rewards. So rare recently partnered with MLB All-Stars Juan Soto and Julio Rodriguez. Head to SoRare.com slash LockedOn, that's spelled, by the way, S-O-R-A-R-E, dot com to draft your team of free player cards, set your lineup, and start competing today to win epic rewards. Again, that's SoRare.com slash LockedOn to start playing today. All right, as promised, some injury updates and also how the Giants may have caught a break in a way by not having to play that final game in Detroit, even though it was exceedingly frustrating. I feel especially bad for those who were there, the players, the staff, and the beat writers, uh, because it was a five-hour delay in which it didn't even rain for the first two hours. And then it did rain for a couple hours or three, I guess, and then they finally call it off. So just a miserable experience if you were there. Thankfully, I was not. But, you know, so now they end up in Miami. And why do I say it's possible they catch a break by not having to play that third game uh, because it was another left-handed pitcher in Matthew Boyd, you know, forever giant Matthew Boyd, who was on the team last year but never even appeared. And they traded him to the Mariners with Kirk Sally for somebody. I can't remember who. But uh, uh, the Giants have struggled against left-handed pitching. There's just no doubt. And it's kind of odd because you look at who have been their best players right now, and it's... J.D. Davis and Tyro Estrada, who are right-handed, and you're able, you know, it's not like their lineup against left-handed pitching is horrible, but without Mitch Hanniger and without Austin Slater, they're forced to have some lefties in that lineup against left-handed pitching. Like in yesterday's lineup, which did come out, but they never played, Lamont Wade Jr. was in there and Mike Yastrzemski was in there. And so that's two left-handed hitters that 
you know, when they're when the Giants are at full strength, I think Conforto, whose calf issue is still bothering him enough that he hasn't been able to start since the Dodgers series. He has pinch hit a couple times, but not able to start. Uh, I think in their ideal alignment, you'd have Mitch Hanniger in left, Austin Slater in center, and Michael Conforto in right against a left-handed pitcher. But right now, you don't have either Hanniger or Slater. So that's two-thirds of what would be your starting outfield. And so they're putting Elliot Ramos in there, and they're having Yastrzemski in there. Conforto's not able to go, so Wade is also in there. So it's basically at all three spots in the outfield. It's not who they would have otherwise. And so to skip one of those games and push it off to July 24th when maybe you're at more full strength, maybe you're playing better, and a team like the Tigers is a team that you just handle with ease, whereas right now they're just kind of scuffling to get a win, maybe it works out in their favor. Who knows? They could have got shut down again. And yeah, I mean, it's just right now facing a lefty is not ideal in terms of how they're performing. doesn't mean it'll continue like that, but you know, they're going to face another couple lefties in this Miami series. So it's just a ton of lefties uh, that the Giants have been facing. Jesus Luzardo tonight, and he's not easy. It's not, it's not an easy matchup by any means, even though the Marlins, like I said, with that poor run differential, their pitching has been pretty good. But their offense, like I said, 20 fewer runs in two more games than the Giants. And so hopefully Logan Webb and the Giants pitching can keep it that way and just keep them off the board and that the Giants can scratch and claw, you know, four or five runs and still be able to win a game uh, as it should be. You sh- if you put up four or five runs against a team that technically you on paper you're better than, you should be able to win those games most of the time. And it just hasn't gone that way so far against the likes of the Royals and the Tigers. But anyway, I mean, just credit where credit is due. Like I said, J.D. Davis, Tyro Estrada have been great. Uh, Jock Peterson, though, you know, it doesn't really affect them in terms of the starting lineup against a left-handed pitcher. But to not have him on the bench, it was costly in the first game. They used him as like a decoy off the bench, but, you know, he wasn't able to play. He has right wrist inflammation. And he w- went on the injured list, the 10-day IL, and Matt Beatty was recalled from AAA. And so, you know, Beatty has a track record of being a pretty decent hitter. And so he's not Jock Peterson, but it's not the worst kind of one-for-one replacement. But he's a lefty, so he's not even going to be in that starting lineup unless there's a righty on the mound, which will be in the middle game of this series. So anyway, things certainly not ideal right now, but... It's a brand new series. Giants are due for some positivity, I think. And the Marlins may be due for a little bit of a step back. So perhaps the stars align here. Logan Webb, fresh off his five-year $90 million extension. If you want to hear about that, I did a podcast about that at the end of last week when that was announced. Uh, Hopefully he can just go out there. He's due for positive regression. Like he's, the ERA is just so much higher than the peripheral numbers would suggest. And for him, it's kind of been about home runs. And so let's see if he can go out there. It's a pitcher friendly ballpark. It's a team that has struggled to score runs in the Marlins. They're due. And so coming up tomorrow, the everydayers will hear about, can the Giants turn it around and win a game in Miami? Every game is huge, 162 games, and they all feel big to me. So anyway, once again, my name is Ben Kaspik. Check me out on Twitter at Ben Kaspik, K-A-S-P-I-C-K. If you like this show, please consider rating it or leaving a review. It helps me out a lot. So thank you in advance, and thanks to everyone who's done so already. I can't wait to be with you again tomorrow, hopefully talking about a win. So thanks again for listening today. You are now Locked on Giants.